Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where um, we've got a rare opportunity today to have a look at the solving of Koten Morinishi, who is the reigning World Sudoku Champion, at least for another few weeks. Uh, the World Sudoku Championship is coming up in Prague. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy looking at the way other people think and trying to understand their thought processes. And the funny thing is, if I look at the way Thomas Snyder, um, or Tom Collier, or Mark Goodliffe solve Sudoku, or David McNeil, um, all world-class solvers, and when I watch them solve, or I review uh, the logic that they've used, I can sort of understand it, and I can see that they've done it very quickly, but there's nothing about it that I find inherently, you know, uh, incredible. It, it's incredible how fast it is, but not the actual logic that's used. Now, Kota is um, he's another thing altogether, and we're going to take a look at his solve of this extra difficult puzzle. This was one of Nicoli's prize puzzles um, from I think, 2016, and he uses logic very early in the solve here that I had to pause the video and stare at it for two or three minutes to understand what he was doing. I just could not understand how he was able to get what he got. So. Without further ado, let's have a look. So this is his real-time solve. It took him six minutes altogether to solve this puzzle. Again, I think to get the most out of this sort of exercise, I really recommend you know, having a look at the puzzle yourselves, trying to solve it, see how long it takes you, see what logic you needed to do it. I'm pretty sure it won't be the logic that he uses. So you can see straight away, the first things he enters are pencil marked five sixes. Um, in these two squares. Now even this isn't totally trivial. What he's done here is he's used this six and he's, he, he's seen it's eliminated sixes from these three squares. So he knows that there is a six here or here. And then he's used the interaction of the, this six in the middle row now with this six to know that a six is forced into one of these two positions. And he can see that a five is also forced into one of these two positions. So within, what, 10 seconds, he's, he's, he's spotted this 5-6 pair. Okay, clever and quick, but not that unusual. He finds the 2 here. This is just straightforward Sudoku logic. 2, 2, this 2 here forces the 2 down. And straightforward 4 here for the same reason. Again, the 4 is forced into the top row of the grid, and this 4 here and this 4 here force it into the middle. And then this 3-5 combination. So it's a very similar piece of logic here to the um, to what we've just seen with the 5-6. This 3 here and this 3 here are forcing the 3s over into one of these two squares. And the 5s here and here are forcing the 5s. So he now has this set up. Now pause the video and think to yourselves, what would be the next thing that you would you would place? You're not going to believe this. Um, this is what he does. There you go. A 5-6 pair down column 9. Now, well done if you spotted that. Um, even, even more congratulations if you can look at this puzzle quickly and work out how he's done that. Because I can tell you this, it is not straightforward. Um, so do pause the video. I really encourage you to, to, to give it a moment or two's thought because it, you know it, it leads, I think, to you being more amazed when I explain quite what he's done. Um, so what he's noticed is this 5-6 here and this 5-6 here. You might say, well, how on earth does that give him a 5-6 pair here? Well, what I think he's then thought He's moved over to this side of the grid, and he's looking in particular here at row 2 and row 8. And he knows that there can't be a 5 or a 6 in this square, and he knows there can't be a 5 or 6 in this square. So he knows that two of these three squares, this one, this one, and this one, are going to include the numbers 5 and 6. And then in his head, he's thought, well, what if the 5 and 6 were here and here? What would that mean? Well, that would mean that we have a uniqueness problem because this puzzle then would have 
um, two solutions because whichever way we place this 5 and this 6 in these two boxes we could just simply reverse these two positions and get a second solution to the puzzle and Kota has realized this at this point of the solve and therefore appreciated there must be a 5 or a 6 in this square in order to avoid the uniqueness problem and he's done exactly the same here on row 8 so he's looked at row 8, he's seen the 5, 6 here so there can't be a 5 or 6 in this position, there can't be a 5 or 6 in this position so again in the open positions, the three open positions he's realized that if there was a 5, 6 double here and here there's a uniqueness problem ergo there cannot be a 5, 6 pair in these two squares therefore the 5 or the 6 must appear here so he's got a 5, 6 pair in column 9 now uh, I think this is absolutely incredible he's done this within two minutes of starting the puzzle um, now ironically look at <laughs> there's a 6 in this box and a 5, 6 he knows this is a 5 or 6 so he knows this is a 5 okay but watch what he does next he <laughs> he he, for, he doesn't see this 6 here and he finds a 2, 3 here now there are two ways of thinking about this 2, 3 and he finds this 1, 3 down at the bottom here so what I think he's done here is he's noticed the 1, 2 and the 3 in row 2 and the 1, 2 and the 3 in row 8 and he's looked at column 3 and he said ok well 4 of the digits are already sort of placed we've got the 4, the 7 and the 8 and this square can't contain a 1, 2 or a 3 because we've identified this as a 5, 6 double. Um, once we remove 1, 2 and 3 from this square and this square, we know that the other three open positions must contain the numbers 1, 2 and 3 somehow. So he's then known this has got to be a 2 or a 3 because there's a 1 in the box. And this has got to be a 1 or a 3 because there's a 2 in the box. So I think this is what he's doing here. And then, having found this, these two squares contain a 1, 2 and a 3, still not notice the 6 over here. Look what he does next. He identifies that this square is a 5 or a 6. Now, this is, again, really subtle. And I think the thing that the best way of displaying what's going on here is actually going to be if I use a different grid to try and illustrate this. So let's bring in another, another grid here. So this is the position he's at, and he's just identified this as a 5-6 pair. So the question is, how does he do this? And I think what he's doing, again, is using, he's using the fact he knows there is a 5 or a 6 in one of these two positions, and a 5 or a 6 in one of these two positions. So let's ask ourselves what that means. So let's just pontificate for a moment that the 5 is here. Now if the 5 is here, this will be a 5, this will be a 6, neither of these squares can contain a 5 now but we know that one of them must be a 5 or a 6. Now because there's a 6 here this will have to be a 6 and look what that does. I mean this is absolutely staggering to me that he's, he's doing all this in his head. The fact that we would end up with this arrangement would mean that there would be a 6 in this square. Now let's, on the other hand, let's say, okay, let's say that wasn't a 5, let's say it was a 6. Get that rid of that 6. If this was a 6, this will be a 6, this will be a 5. By exactly the same logic, neither of these two squares can contain a 6. They need to contain a 5 or a 6. This is going to be a 5, so that's going to give a 5 in this square. And it's exactly the same if we just pick this square for a 5 or a 6. You can see it just unwinds in exactly the same way. And you end up with a 5 or a 6 here. Um, so, again, some quite extraordinary, breathtaking logic here from Kota. All within a couple of minutes of beginning the solve. And I think that's what we'll see him figure out now. Let's just check. Uh, well, he, he actually goes straight to here because he he looks at this, 6, 5, this is the 6, this has got to be the 5 up here and once he's got that he's home and hosed basically um, so a quite, to me anyway as I say what I like to do is to understand how people think and to try and understand um, 
you know, the way that their mind's working. These Nikoli recordings give us the opportunity to do that, but they, um, they give me the insight that Kota is a breed apart. He is really, really a brilliant solver. He is finding things so fast that take, that are just outside the normal logic uh, and outside um, the spectrum of normal Sudoku solving. If you were to run this puzzle through a computer, it would need a totally different uh, solution path. And Kota's un I think for a human being is is far far more efficient. So I hope this was an interesting video. Uh, I don't think I can make a more interesting video than this to those of you who enjoy Sudoku. So please do subscribe if you enjoy the channel. We really appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.